a few months ago. She was sitting her A-levels, but last night she became the first British woman in 44 years to win a major tennis tournament. Yeah, our reporter Samira Hussein spoke to Emma Raducanu in New York shortly after her historic US Open win. I've got no idea what's going on, not at all. I've got no clue, but anything that comes my way, I'm ready to deal with it. I've, and I've got great people around me to, to take me through these moments, and they got me here. And, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to celebrate with them later and also go home and see everyone back home. What was it like to receive a message from the Queen? Yeah, it meant everything to get a re message from Her Majesty. I mean, she's such a great inspiration and role model for the whole country. So to have a note from her, I was extremely honoured and very, very grateful that, you know, she took notice of my tennis. I mean, I can't believe it. I'm maybe going to frame that letter or something. <laughs> the last time I spoke to you on Monday, I asked how you celebrate and you said frozen yogurt. What's the flavour for a winning, for a championship? The flavour doesn't change. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's chocolate with more chocolate and some chocolate brownie. I mean, I'm one of those. So uh, the last week we haven't managed to actually because of late finishes. But uh, tonight I'm sure, I'm sure we'll go to town on uh, everything. <laughs> I should smile. think so too. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely time for a chocolate brownie. Now, Emma has not only won the US Open, but she has gained a huge following of dedicated fans across the UK. Uh, well, Sancho Berg was watching last night's match with some of them at her, her old tennis club in Bromley. From the outset, there were more cheers and whoops than worried pauses. In the club where Emma Raducanu first played tennis in Wimbledon, and in clubs across the country. Harry Bushnell, her very first tennis coach, went from anxiety to joy in the final seconds. When Emma hurt her knee and went back out, he said he saw the little girl he'd known. That reminded me of when she fell over on clay court A when I was teaching her how to slide once and her dad just told her to get up and get on with it. Kate is being coached by Harry now. She's met Emma and wants to be just like her. I'm really happy that she won because um, she's an amazing person and she, she hits the ball really well and uh, when I'm older I want to be. Many people told you they hoped she'd win but they were speechless when she actually did. They're hoping that she won't forget them, that she'll still keep coming to the club where she learned the game. I'm sore and hoarse from screaming but it's so incredible, I'm so happy for it. It's an exciting time for British tennis um, to see one of our homegrown um, juniors come through the ranks, go through to the LTA pathway and to, to get to a Grand Slam champion. It's amazing, it shows that the system works. Here and across the country, Emma Raducanu has given a tremendous boost to tennis and especially to girls playing the game. Sancha Berg, BBC News. Well, uh, let's talk more about that stunning achievement with British tennis player Naomi Brody, who joins us in the studio. Former British number one, Anne Kiyothavong, who is in London for us this morning. Morning, Anne. Great to see you. Morning. Um, and I'm actually <laughs> going to come to you first of all, Anne, because I know that you know Emma really, really very well. We spoke to you about her at Wimbledon and her progress. If you remember that conversation that you and I had on Centre Court then about how Emma was going to get herself together and what she had to do, would you have expected us to be sitting here talking about a US Open win? No, hand on heart, no. And I don't think anyone can truly say they um, saw this coming so soon. I keep saying we knew she was good, but I, I mean, to achieve what she has achieved is just huge. It really is one of the greatest sporting achievements um, to come through as a qualifier, win 10 matches without dropping a set. You know, it's, um, yeah, it just, things like this just don't happen. But what Emma has shown um, is just what an incredible tennis player she is. She's just she was able to embrace uh, the situation. She was able to maintain a, a aggressive style of tennis, and there was just no backup um, from her. And I'm still, I'm still in disbelief. I have to keep pinching myself to <laughs> just make sure <laughs> what we witnessed last night really happened. <laughs> Naomi, it is, you know, as Anne said, it's it's almost unbelievable. It's a fairy tale. All the all the words you can use, but it, it's like a film, isn't it? You know, for somebody to not just come through qualifying, but also not to drop a single set. 
I know, it's absolutely crazy. Um, and it, it, it's so exciting for the sport of tennis at, at the moment in this country because that, that match last night was it was a crossover game, wasn't it? So many people that would never normally watch tennis tuned in to watch it. And what two ambassadors for the sport to, to represent it and um, just both so young, eloquent, great competitors, fantastic players. It, it was just a great night. And I know you were working uh on the match last night. At what point did you know we were about to see something special? Was it was it very, very early on? Oh, look, it, it was always going to be a difficult match. Leila Fernandez, I mean, you, you have to give credit to her for her achievement and for her run beating the players that she did. But in the final, she was just outplayed. But it was a high-quality women's final. When you think about the start of that match, two players who have never been in that situation before on the biggest stage in tennis, really playing lights-out tennis. But it wasn't until midway in the second set where I, I thought, oh my goodness, she's going to do this, she's going to do this. And then when she did, uh, I mean, I was overcome with emotion. Uh, honestly, to, to see a British female player achieve it it still makes me feel quite emotional because it's um yeah it, it just still feels surreal and we i'll ask you another one and quickly um at wimbledon sally said you know she spoke to you at wimbledon there were some people who made you know unkind comments felt that she hadn't got the mental strength to do it didn't use these words but effectively were saying she bottled it um if you're going to answer your critics that's a fairly emphatic way to do it that she's found she nailed it. She nailed it. She uh, she she showed us um, what she was all about. Um, and to her critics, well, she doesn't need to say anything. Her tennis did all the talking. Mm, absolutely. No, I'm interested to know. We know that um, uh, you know, speaking about Wimbledon at the time, there were, you know, Emma's on social media. She perhaps would be looking at messages on her phone. How do you manage that level of attention and maybe some of the mean stuff that comes your way? Because I wonder whether in the past that is something that has affected her. I think it will actually help her that she's the generation that's grown up with social media now. I'm that kind of crossover generation that it hit us in my late teens and it, we were really learning on the job of how to deal with it. And um, But that generation, they've grown up with it. It's the norm for them now, isn't it? So I, th I think she seems to be handling everything really well. And she said after the final, she's got a great team around her. She really trusts them all. And um, she's ready for whatever comes at her. It's mad, isn't it? She just, we're looking at the pictures of her now. She looks like she was born to it. I'm not yeah. sure who was, was it Martina Navratilova said when she walked on court, she already looked like a champion. Yeah, she said she looks like a full package already and she's she's only just starting out in a game and, and I think I was watching I was watching you last night, Anne, but they, they were talking about how um you know, she has got this such complete game already, but there's so many areas in a game that you can squeeze more out of. There's not really necessarily anything that really needs improvement, um, but but there's areas that she can develop. So so it's just really exciting for the future. It's, it's interesting, Anne, isn't it? Watching the way the women's game has evolved over the years. For those of us, I mean, I'm obviously not as old as some of the people watching, but we remember, you know, Chris Everett and people like that, and then coming through with Steffi Graf, who was more powerful, and then the Williams sisters and... I don't know, what is it about Emma that, that what does she have to her game that, that sets her apart, do you think? Well, it's a brand of tennis. It's a fearless approach that she has when she's out there on the tennis court and the fact that she just doesn't back up. And when you watch her move, her athletic ability is such that, it, you know, it takes your breath away. But she carries herself well um, and she, you know, she's not afraid of the spotlight, but she engages with fans as well, which I think is key in her likability mode. You know, mm. she can crack us the odd smile under pressure she can um she's not afraid to express herself but she carries herself with with such poise um and um you know she, i think uh, you know if she continues the way whatever she's doing she's a fantastic role model for so many oh and it is great to catch up with you brilliant to talk to you and i feel like we've bookended that conversation that we had back in wimbledon when things weren't going so well and here we are. Yeah. So it's brilliant. And <laughs> lovely know. to see you. It's great. And Naomi, <laughs> great you. to see you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both. Thanks. See the headlines as they happen and watch BBC News live in the app and get the full story with bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Follow the story for all the latest with BBC News.